This episode is a response to the video Scientific Evidence That God Is Real by Gate Messenger. Yes, it's a response to a single source, so you know what that means, right? It's time for another episode of Dissecting Pseudoscience, Ponage Edition. As usual, I'll be paraphrasing a lot in the interest of saving time. A link to Gate Messenger's video can be found in the description. God has four primary attributes. He's eternal, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. If all four are found in a single force, then that force is God. Okay. You've either defined God as whatever has these attributes, meaning you don't get to say anything else about him, her, it, or you've committed a fallacy called affirming the consequent by not ruling out that something other than the God you believe in could have these attributes. You can't say that if some force has these attributes, it logically follows that it had a son who got nailed to a board or that he made the universe in six days or something like that. Malcolm W. Brown found a force connecting two free electrons. This force was proved to be eternal because it makes signals go faster than light, and therefore doesn't follow the flow of time. Are you talking about quantum entanglement? Because that's not a force, it's a relationship between two particles. If two electrons are entangled, that means I can learn about one of them by measuring the other. You're confusing the mathematical description of multiple states existing in superposition with the actual state of a particle. As I explained in an earlier episode, the math is just a descriptive model of something we don't truly understand. The wave function of one particle collapses because it's interacted with, and that tells us the state of the other one as well. Of course, that means the wave function of the other one collapses as well, we know the value of the variable we're interested in. That doesn't mean that there's been any physical interaction between the two particles. No information has been sent between them. Besides, how can a force be eternal if the electrons connected by it are not? We know that electrons can be created and annihilated. We also know this force to be eternal because we can see light from distant stars. Light, which must have been sent out before the universe is said to have been created. That has nothing to do with quantum entanglement. It has to do with the universe being a lot older than it's said to be. And seeing as your definition of God doesn't address the age of the universe, you have just affirmed the consequent. This eternal force connects to all three electrons. That shows that the force is omnipresent. What the hell are you talking about? If, if two electrons are entangled, all of them are? In experiments by Russian scientists, it was found that laser photons knew when a DNA molecule was added into vacuum. Yeah, in the sense that a rock knows which way to fall if it's dropped from your hand. The photons slash electrons... Do you even know the difference? ...collected around the DNA strand, and changed the order of the DNA into what they desired. Could this be evolution? Uh... What?! After the DNA was removed and the laser turned off, the excess photons remained in a position resembling the DNA for over 22 minutes. Light remained in place in vacuum. Yeah, that, that's usually what happens. Unless, of course, the laser isn't ordered from Acme by a coyote! <sighs> light does not remain stationary in vacuum. It travels at the speed of light in vacuum. That's why it's called the speed of light in vacuum. <sighs> Idiot. But other than that, I... 
I actually checked the URL and um, I found an insanely stupid summary of an article with no sources provided except for a link to another website. Context, Forum for Border Science. Of course, border science is just another way to say pseudoscience. The site is run by the authors Grazina Fossar and Franz Bludorf. I'm probably pronouncing both names wrong. They're described as physicists, but oddly I can't find any mention of them having PhDs or any other degrees or where they would have gotten any degrees. And Google Scholar can't find a single peer-reviewed article by either of them. Based on what I've seen, there is no reason to take any of this seriously. Moving on... The easiest to prove is that this force is omnipotent. If this force created everything from nothing, it must be omnipotent, because energy cannot be created. So far you've brought up three separate phenomena. Quantum entanglement, light from distant stars, and photons messing with DNA. None of these have anything to do with creating energy from nothing. And by the way, no one is suggesting that energy has ever been created at all. It's easy to understand how energy can exist anyway once you realize that potential energy can be negative. The total energy of the universe appears to be zero. So where did it come from? Does it have something to do with this force being timeless? What force are you talking about? The force was able to use free electrons to manipulate DNA, showing what it can do on a tiny scale. Earlier you said photons, now you're saying electrons? Photons and electrons are not the same thing, okay? Can't you even get your own bullshit straight? What can this force do to free electrons on a larger scale? What? <laughs> force! Since the universe is full of free electrons, yeah, uh, mm, and it's not. I can only imagine what they could do if they all worked as a single entity. This could be how the universe was created in only six days. <laughs> this data implies that all three electrons working together as a collective are omnipotent. What data? You, you just pulled this out of your ass! <sighs> And how the hell could electrons bring the universe into existence? They didn't exist until after the universe began! <sighs> and where are you getting the six-day bullshit from? The Bible? I covered this in the beginning. You can't have it both ways. You can't define God as whatever has these attributes and then argue that it's necessarily the God of the Bible. Plus, in the double slit experiment, light, a free electron. Seriously, high school, go to it! Showed that it was observant of its surroundings. It showed signs of intelligence. The particle knows it's being observed because to detect it, it has to be interacted with. It doesn't show any more signs of intelligence than a rock that falls when you drop it. This is the first piece of evidence that shows that this force is omniscient. What force? Are you saying that the electron itself is a force now? The STI, Self-Thinking Interface Device, created by Roger G. Vogelsang, proved that there is ultimate knowledge in the force connecting all three electrons. Oh, so now we're back to entanglement. Wait, what? A link to his scientific journal can be found in the description. Again, you're providing a source that's anything but scientific. It's a blog with letters by Vogelsang, who claims to be a theoretical physicist, but oddly doesn't present himself as a doctor. These are not peer-reviewed articles. Calling something a scientific journal doesn't make it one. A Google Scholar search doesn't return a single article by anyone named Roger G. Vogelsang. Just a few patents, none of which have anything to do with the subject in question. Also, someone who's clearly revolutionized the computer industry should definitely be important enough to have a Wikipedia page, but yeah, he doesn't. Nor does his invention. 
wow, I, I guess the Illuminati deleted those, right? Because we are heading for Tinfoil Hatland now, aren't we? So this force is eternal, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. It is God. There you have it. Scientific evidence that God exists. You should leave the science to people who at least know the difference between photons, electrons, quantum entanglement, starlight, the effects of photons on DNA, and forces. <sighs> this was an incoherent mess from an idiot who can't possibly have passed high school physics. And the sources cited are about as reliable as an email from a Nigerian prince. If physics proves that God exists, or that the universe has a conscious mind, or whatever, how come there are more atheists among physicists than there are among scientists who study other fields? Having studied physics, I can tell you the answer. The more you learn about how the natural world functions, the more you realize that it works just fine without an invisible wizard pulling the strings. A physicist believing in a god, at least the kind of god that communicates through ancient books, answers prayers, and interferes with the universe actively, and punishes non-believers by sending them to hell to be tortured forever. That's kind of like an auto mechanic believing that a car is pulled by invisible, intangible horses. It's just plain stupid. Physics doesn't prove that a god exists, nor does it prove the opposite. But it does prove that if a god exists, he's unemployed. 